Hello, everyone. Welcome to our, I believe, second European workshop. I'm Irena Pullman from the HDF Group, and it's my pleasure to introduce our first speaker, a founder of the HDF Group and the person behind the HDF Software and our current CEO, Mike Falk. And Mike will talk about our company and where we are and what our future, past, current and future is, I believe. Thank you, Mike, it's yours. All right, thank you, Elena. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks for that, that introduction. Um, as Elena said, this meeting is co-sponsored by the uh, European Synchrotron Radiation Facility and the, the HDF group. Um, <clears throat> and I am the uh, sort of interim director of the HDF group. I'll just say a little bit about uh, our nonprofit company uh, with about 30 staff members. Uh, our mission is to develop and support technologies that provide rapid and easy uh, and permanent access to complex data. Uh, we maintain and support the HDF libraries and similar technologies, but as our mission indicates, we want not only to support, maintain, and grow existing technologies, but to grow and adapt as data and data uses change and grow. Uh, but every bit as important as the technologies, of course, are the applications that use the technologies and the people who create and support them. Uh, and that's the HDF uh, community. Uh, so equally important, uh, 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 an equally important part of what we do is to support the community. Uh, as you will see in this meeting, um, what makes these technologies really special is what all of you out there uh, are doing with them. Uh, I want to thank all the people who are making the meeting possible. Uh, Andy Getz, uh, we go back with Andy uh, quite a long time. He and his team at ERS have, have worked closely with our team to organize and present the workshop. Uh, this is actually their second workshop. Uh, you can find the first workshop online on the HDF group website, uh, and that was in 2019. And uh, if you haven't looked at it, I strongly recommend that you do, because there's a lot of really good stuff there. Uh, I want to thank uh, Lori Cooper, Dax Rodriguez, and Elena, uh, who worked with Andy and his team. Uh, Lori, in particular, is the wizard behind the curtain who makes all of this stuff uh, possible. Um, we're especially grateful, of course, to the speakers who have put time and effort into preparing and sharing information about their activities, their technologies, and their products with us. And we're really looking forward to what they have to say. Uh, and last but not least, I want to thank the audience. Uh, the last I heard, which was about a minute ago, um, there were about 170 attendees. Uh, I suspect this might be a record, uh, whatever. It's sure fantastic to have all of you here. So thanks for showing up. Um, I think you already know kind of what the ground rules for the meeting are. Um, they've been shared with everyone via email. Uh, and I believe uh, they may be going out through the chat as well. It's the usual stuff. Keep yourself muted unless you're talking. Uh, use chat uh, and, and so forth. I just want to spend a, a little bit of time of talking about the talks uh, that you will hear. I really want to hype them. I think you'll find something for everyone. There are going to be a number of talks about how to optimize the HDF5 library to take advantage of the latest uh, high performance computing architectures, uh, about new features that make the library better and easier to use, new plugins and APIs that expand uh, the usefulness uh, of HDF5. Uh, there are also are going to be a number of talks about taking HDF5 into the cloud uh, and H optimizing HDF5 for the cloud. Um, we'll see some talks by organizations that are creating standards involving HDF5, both within disciplines and across disciplines. As we all know, standards can expand the usefulness of technologies like HDF5 by orders of magnitude. So we're really pleased to see that work uh, being highlighted here. <laughs> um, we will also learn about a number of tools uh, that improve how we can view and, and work with HDF5 files. 
and with HDF5 generally. Um, and uh, similar to with standards, tools are critical to keeping HDF5 viable, um, as well as uh, to expanding the community of, of people who benefit uh, from uh, using the technologies. And finally, the whole reason that we're here, the whole reason we have technologies like HDF5 is so that applications can solve important problems and create new knowledge. Uh, there's a talk uh, today about using uh, <clears throat> HDF5 for microscopy. And there's a, another talk tomorrow about using HDF5 to search the universe for signs of intelligent life. Uh, so we can see that HDF5 is used to probe and understand some of the tiniest things in the universe and some of the largest structures in the universe, and of course, everything in between. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, thank you all for coming. Um, I hope you find the next two days both interesting and useful. Uh, be sure to participate, make connections, use the chat, um, and ask lots of good questions and give your comments and ideas. Um, so with that, I'll say thank you and on with the show. Um, over to you, uh, Elena. Thank you, Mike. Um, we have a few minutes before our next speaker, Gerd Heber, is uh, scheduled. I'm encourage audience, if you have any questions about HDF group, we have about nine minutes to answer your questions and have dialogue with Mike and any other members of HDF group. So please unmute yourself and just ask a question. So probably it's too late in the afternoon or too early here. Um, so I'll ask a question, Lori. Can you tell us how the timer works on on this uh, on these talks? No, I did it last minute. I was very nervous. Uh, no, I found uh, one of my coworkers emailed a coworkers hoping for a solution, and someone recommended something. So I am using open broadcast service and downloaded some things from YouTube. And yeah, so I'm excited to have that. Oh, but okay, it was, yeah. <laughs> so we can use this as a practice session for any uh, questions. We'd love for people to unmute or show themselves on the camera. I know Garrett's a big fan of seeing the people he's talking to. Um, so feel free to unmute or we're watching the chat and we'll bring up questions. Uh, we, we did have, have question. one. We There's have a, a question, question in the chat, Lori. Will the slides okay. and or talks be made available? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so I'm putting slides as I receive them from presenters. There, there will be a link on the web page for the conference. I'll paste that in the chat again in a second. And uh, we're recording all the sessions. We'll put them on YouTube, link those up as well, and email you guys when I get that in the next couple of days. So any other questions about logistics? Okay, then I, I guess we will start at 7.20, uh, our next uh, talk in 10 minutes, a little bit less than 10 minutes. So stay tuned. And if any questions appear, we'll answering as they're appearing in the chat room or if people are mute, unmuted. So I, I can uh, use this opportunity, hopefully, to ask a question and also to test that my microphone is working <laughs> as, as one of the speakers. That's a, uh, a little bit of a, an impediment if, if, if it doesn't work. Um, one, <clears throat> I was um, doing some um, sort of a uh, little bit of research into HDF5 
in preparation for for my my presentations coming up soon um and one of the things i was uh, very pleasantly uh, surprised to see, well, pleased to see um was the documentation on the hdf5 file format which I think that's relatively new. I could be wrong, but I, I think when I, I, I haven't followed HDF5 um, very closely, but uh, I think last time I looked, it wasn't documented. But I was curious, have, with the documentation, have you seen anyone, uh, any projects attempting to implement support for HDF5 outside of the core library? Actually, yes, uh, you will. Uh, one of the talks that you'll hear, I think it's today, JP Switsky is going to be talking today. Uh, we've seen that uh, not too much, but we've seen a little bit of it. And uh, uh, so so there will be one example. Uh, typically, what we've seen is implementations not of like everything that's in the in the specification mm -hmm. yeah, or yeah. implementations of readers, but not writers. Um, and, and that sort of thing. And uh, we really, uh, I, I mean, I personally anyway, really like to see that. Uh, first of all, it, it shows that, that it can be done uh, mm -hmm. by others. It's always great to have a second implementation. You know, that's, that's kind of generally true in technologies when you have standards. Um, so yeah, I, I like the idea of thinking, for, thinking going forward of the HDF groups implementation as the sort of reference imp implementation, yep, yep, yep. Um, but people can do things, you know, you might have a special need. And in, in this case, JP will talk about the fact that he needed to do multi-threading. Uh, mm. So uh, I, yeah, so we, we have seen that and we're glad to see that. Mm. Uh, the specification has been out there for quite a while, but I think it's only been really, really as visible uh, recently. I'm not sure about that. I know Garrick has worked really hard to get the, the documentation more visible, more available. So uh, um, I'm glad to see that. And I'm glad you came across that. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was very good. Hi. Uh, there is, just to add what Mike said, uh, there is implementation pure Java reader uh, from mm -hmm. uni, uh, Unidata. Uh, and uh, documentation, we are now, we, I will talk about this a little bit tomorrow, but we are, our documentation is very hard to search uh, because how we uh, serve it from our conference. So we are now moving documentation and probably this is what you found that is served from mm -hmm. S3 bucket. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm glad you I, found it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I found it. It was, it was a nice, uh, nicely provocative uh, link about um so i've got this data file format and uh, i haven't my software the, the libraries that uh, uh analyze it aren't no longer available or don't work um which is a um, data preservation so i i've i've been i've i know people who who feel responsible for data preservation uh, and this is kind of a, 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 a not an uncommon occurrence i would say that you know the a, a format the, the software that supports a particular format is just not available anymore, it just doesn't work. And then right. you're left yeah. with something and you have no way of getting at it. Yeah, I mean, that's so long term preservation is is one of the, you know, one of the pillars of why we're here and, and what we're trying to, to do over time. Uh, so in that regard, we've we've always had from the very beginning a, a published specification. As I say, it's been maybe harder to find uh, until recently, but it's it's always been there on our website, um, and uh, it, that that has to be possible. Uh, so um, absolutely, really glad you brought that up. Right, and there are, just to mention a few other examples. There are actually quite a few. Uh, there are examples in Python up at Argon. Someone created a reader, a native reader in Python. There's one in JavaScript that's Node.js based. And then there's recently one read and write uh, in .NET. Actually, somebody wrote that in C Sharp. And, and it's that, I think it's called HDF5.NET project. It's on GitHub. And um, so there are quite a few uh, efforts uh, in that direction. And, 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 oh, and then here the, what was the audio format? Uh, the guy that did that, that spatial audio, he also uh, implemented reader and writer. Uh, um, yeah. 
but the, I've forgotten the, which language. Mm -hmm. the, the the JavaScript one's actually uh, interesting, or would might be interesting. Um, so, uh, do you have a, a link for that you could maybe share? I can. Yeah, I'll let me make a, a note and I'll I'll find it. Thanks. Um, yes, we'll, um, we'll create on our web page and put a note for myself, a list of libraries in different languages. Yes. That's a great idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 